Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Game Core. This is the one and only gaming podcast that you will ever need. I am your host once again. My name is Matt Hedrick, and here with me, almost never thrilled to be here. Let's be honest. That's Chad Pardo. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm the perpetual uh, um, red foreman of this show. Matt, if you if you make the show go longer than an hour, I'm putting my foot in your ass. So who would that make me if you're red? I wouldn't be Kelso. your kid. I'd be some. I'd be one of Kelso. Kelso. It'd be Kelso. Oh shit! You piss off red the most. <laughs> It'd either be Kelso or Fez, but I feel like having a white man play Fez in, in the reboot of that '70s podcast would be a bad idea. So you're, you're gonna yeah. have to play. Uh, you're gonna have to play. Uh, Kelso. And now, normally you could uh, suggest Eric, but there were at least two times where mm. Red showed Eric compassion. Um, mm. The ones that I remember the most are uh, after Kitty's dad died. Um, mm. he, uh, uh, he was hugging um, Kitty, and Eric was there, and he waved Eric in for a family hug. And then in like season four, Donna broke up with him, or he broke up with Donna, I forget what it was. And he's like, listen. Take a few days, even a few weeks. Maybe don't get out of bed. Maybe just do whatever. You'll get back. You'll you'll come back from this. And I, I was like, what, 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 what? Red's a good dad. What? I I think there might be one or two other. All ones, I all I, I heard could... was all I heard was compassion. All what? I heard was compassion, and I'm like, you're not ever gonna offer me compassion. No, God, no. That's why you're Kelso. Because he could give a <laughs> flying fuck a doodle do about Kelso. At least with Fez, he was worried about getting his daughter sent to jail. Hell, I think he was even nicer to uh, uh, Hyde than, uh, than Eric. Oh, by the by, Danny Masterson got arrested. <laughs> really? Yeah, for rape. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I'm not laughing to underscore this, the seriousness. Um, we've been covering this... I've dubbed it the the wrestling reckoning, with a W, because mm. it's just fun that way, and like everyone's getting arrested for rape or being accused of sexual assault or or like grooming minors. I'm just sitting here going, ah, uh, why? How fucking bored are you at quarantine? Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, no, like these like, these are like, years in the making in some in some cases. Oh, okay, okay. I thought that was just like a recent thing. Okay. No, and I don't even know what spurned it all. Um, actually, yeah, I do. Mm. Yeah, I do. Um, so it was a uh, um, we we end up on the wrong side of union talks on this show. <laughs> okay. No, we do. <laughs> we do. You know, right. just, just thinking about uh, you know we've talked about uh talked about the uh the, who, who is it Bethesda or or Rockstar. I think it was Rockstar. They're yeah. like, hey, don't unionize. Uh, it might have been, been Blizzard, too, I think, at one point. Oh, it, no, it, it was Blizzard. That's who it was. It was Blizzard. And they're like, don't you not unionize because you'll get paid less. And they're like, what? And they're like, yeah, that's kind of how unions work. You, you ask for more money, mm-hmm. and, you, and they end up taking more off the top than you expect, and then you actually make less than what you were before because unions. Now, unions have their place. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. But uh, the guy who, who kicked off this whole thing on the wrestling side of things was trying to form a wrestling union. <sighs> Not anymore. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and, and like honestly, like I'm glad like this shit's coming to light because there's been uh, two stories in in my tenure. Like before I started working for Fan Sided, I was doing a lot of independent, a lot of freelance selling my stories kind of shit, writing under pseudonyms and and, mm-hmm. and, and just dog walking myself every day to try to get anything done. Mm-hmm. And um. I almost had one, one big story, but I could never get a second source on an, on, on an allegation. I had three sources acknowledging three different things, and all three were kind of like softly verified in between the, uh, the, the contacts, but none of them could, you know, they didn't have any firsthand knowledge of the, of the incidents, so I couldn't run with anything. Yeah. Because unlike so many yeah, other hard people... Ev- you, need the hard, you need the hard evidence. Right. Yeah. Unlike so many, you know, people, because like if you're reporting your own personal experience, that's you know, I consider that a different thing. But if you're a reporter, reporting on on a different, uh, reporting on allegations, I I have subscribed to the theory because uh, that's what I was taught that you need to 
verifiable sources. And if you don't get two sources, then you don't take the story public. So I, I've had to sit on two different stories like that in the last six years. So I'm glad some of these are coming out. None of my stories that are recovering or tracking down have been exposed or outed that I've seen. So I don't know how serious they were or how true they were, but maybe they'll come out. And then I could be like, ah, I knew about that one. I was trying to, I was trying to break it, but, but I didn't have enough of the info. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a sorry. <laughs> so uh, with that being said, let's talk about something that I'm not sorry about. A radical Rex. He's the best dinosaur. He's like uh, an ice cream sandwich on a hot day. He is, he is th- the blues that blow your melancholy away. This dude, I'm telling you, Matt, I'm going to find a way to make him fucking famous. I'm going to make a movie. <sighs> He's fucking awesome, dude. He's, he is. He's, he's fantastic. Fucking, he's fucking dancing. He's like, dude, I'm radical. Radical, 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 radical. What's he, that? What's that awesome about a small dinosaur with a big head? What's that awesome about that? Right. He's he's basically that dinosaur from Meet the Robinsons. I have a big arm, a big head, and tiny arms. I don't think this plan was well thought out. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> and it's just fucking text. That poor dinosaur. All he wanted to do was 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 be good to his master. Master. Oh, crime. sadness. Right. I felt so bad for that dinosaur. <laughs> OK, so let's uh, let, let's talk about the fact that Radical Rex has got four biddies hanging out with him at the, at the start of this fucking uh, this fucking game. And they all look alike. Right? This dude is nailing uh, um, not, not quadruplets. What, what, what are they called? Quadruplets. Qu- yeah, they're just quadruplets. I was like, that the quadruplets ain't right. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's 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 talk about the the little the little uh, little stinker. Um, he's a dinosaur, and he fights evil wizards. Apparently, <laughs> I will say this: all with the help of his skateboard. <laughs> that's, that's, dude. As we all know, magic is defeated by skateboards. That that's science. <laughs> I love it. I love that that the reason why Radical Rex doesn't become infected with the the the, the douche uh, uh, I mean of the of the magi- magician spell is because he's fucking napping because he's a goddamn lazy cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Laziness has its advantages, apparently. Fucking surfer bro. Oh no! Dude, oh my god! Is this the dude from Game Pro? Is this his game? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Man, my name's Cody, and I'm here to talk about <laughs> games this week. Man, I have smoked a lot of meth today. What was his name? <laughs> it wasn't Cody. It was like, it's not, is it Brian? Is that, is that the name or is that wrong? I don't know. I, well, I asked you. Cody was the name of the kid from Step by Step who talked like that. Huh, hey, what's up, uncle, whatever your name is? I'm Cody. Yeah, no one cares, Cody. So... Or Brandon, Brian, Brandon, something like that. Brandon, maybe. Is it's that surfer bro, uh, dude, bro voice? I love it. I'm bringing it back. Oh, what's up, everyone? So, the dinos have gone. What's a good word for for anger with a D? The dinos have gone douchified. To radical Rex to save the day by fighting off hordes of his friends, giant fucking. Mosquitoes, I can only imagine, are giving you every vial. West Nile, you fucking COVID, 014, you fucking COVID prehistoric, mumps, measles, heffalumps, woozles. These are some big-ass fucking mosquitoes, man. So, yes. Oh, were you actually No, I was just saying, for a minute, it's not like you're going to Dr. You're going to, like, Dr. Seuss territory. (laughs) I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. I will not eat them on the train. I will not eat them on a plane. I will not eat them with lava. I will not eat them with magma. That was me trying to rhyme lava with magma. It didn't work. Fuck off. So, gameplay. Graphics. That's the one we're starting with. Uh, I adore these. He, They're fantastic. He looks like uh, uh, a smaller version of... Um, I forget the dad's name on dinosaurs. Remember the dad? Uh, 
Earl? Yeah, Earl. I his, think it's Earl or his, Carl, his, something like that. I think it's Earl. Um, the dad's best friend is a T-Rex. And he looks okay. just like that. He also looks like Yoshi from the Mario Brothers movie. Uh, uh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pretend that Matt had an orgasm while throwing up because that would make him seem super fucking weird. <laughs> the thought of that just makes me puke in general. Yep. The thought of you having sex makes me puke in general. So, like, you know, same wavelength. Well... If you're thinking of that, if you're thinking about that, then I don't know what to tell you. It's like that fucking scene from uh, Office Space where he just can't get Lumberg out of his head. He doesn't want him there. Just to the left. That's it. Great. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> so, graphically speaking, I love the designs of this. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. the, the enemies are repetitive because it's a fucking SNES game. Like, what are you going to fucking do? You do get some variants and varieties throughout the game, but, you know, what you see is what you get. But the backgrounds are beautifully designed. The game levels, I played about... F- How many levels did I play? played this after we talked on Saturday. I think, like, four levels? And then I was, I was going to come back to it, and I totally didn't. Um, mm. I, I, I thought the level designs were pretty good from the ones I saw. You know, I didn't get too far into the game. So maybe that's not me. But well, variation variation helps here. It's a real it's a real nice thing here. Yeah, it's definitely like a modified platformer though. Like you're still you know you're still doing the Mario shit where like you know you're, you're walking and jumping and, and taking things on, but you do get to do a lot of different things. Like you're swinging from vines, you ride your little you ride your little uh, skateboard orama, you're on a pogo stick or something pogo stick esque at one point. So, like, you know, there's, mm. there's enough going on here to make you think, yeah, this is a variety. So I, I'll, I'll definitely give the designs of everything, uh, um, I think a solid four is good. Um, you know, with, with these games, you want to see a little bit more in terms of the creativity. And I understand with platformers, like, you often won't. But mm. I think about a game like, you know, Final Fantasy VI came out on the SNES. It had a lot of variety. Mm-hmm. Granted, I only played, you know, 50 of the 1,640th hours of the game. The game was too long. <laughs> but, like, you know, yeah, I, no you, shit. you could still do more creativity with certain villains. But that's just me. I give it a four. I, th- I think Radical Rex earns a solid four. I, I, I'm getting, like, the moment I started playing this, I immediately got, like, Bonk's Adventure vibes out of it from the Nintendo days. Yep, I remember Bonk's. And I, Caveman yeah, dude, I, right? I, and that made me, like, it, yeah. Yeah, it, like, it just immediately got that style to it, and that made me fall in love with it. I, I, I too, I love the level design. I think it's highly creative. I, um... The the cartoonish visuals to this of all the characters that vibe it gives off to is very fun and kind of playful and appro- like approachable to a bit a wider audience which I which is nice too. Very Saturday morning cartoon. Is, mm-hmm. Everything here is solid, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go honestly a four. I think a four is a good spot. I'm gonna agree with you. I think four is a good spot. Well, I'm glad you concur. Um, I put that under the sounds. Matthew, what would you, what, how, how would you grade out the sounds? What, what, what's your thought process? After um, text? in this, in, well, in this one, um, I think right away it, it sets a good vibe with its, with its tone with like music and stuff. Cause it, it gives you this kind of like a beat jumpy song to it. And it kind of keeps that going throughout all the stages you play. Sound effects are silly and over the top, and the music is, is kind of is upbeat and it does set a good tone. So I, I thoroughly and I thoroughly enjoyed it here. I, I felt like it was setting everything up perfectly for what it's trying to present. So I'm gonna honestly, I wouldn't say five, but a solid four. I think I'll go four, but I think my reasoning is a little bit different. Um, I always feel like games, much like movies, need that specific sound, you know, that, 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 that musical triumphant. The da 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 da
where like the memorable ma- like the memorable yeah. theme or something. Yeah, and I okay. don't feel like Radical Rex brings you the high and heavy. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. And like, even if it's not catchy or whimsical, it could still be, you know, it could still be, you know, um, profound, like uh, Final Fantasy sixes. And I'm sticking strictly to this mm. generation of console when it comes to themes, you know. Uh, and I, I feel like it doesn't do that. The sound effects are pretty solid, although like much with most, uh, um, it's not a brawler so much, but it is a, a, a I'll call, what an action plat- <clears throat> platformer. Is that what we call these? Yeah, that sounds about right. You know, as far as an action platformer goes, the sound effects aren't too repetitive, but but you're not going to hear a lot of variety. Um, but definitely, uh, mm-hmm. as far as um, <clears throat> music goes, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's definitely a four. So gameplay. Oh. A lot of variety in this game. <sighs> You know, there really enough. is. Like, Shock, it's not, it enough. is not left, it is not really left to right for the most part. No, um, first level is very much just kind of Sonic based, like, if you will. You know, you're, you're running through, um, loop the loops. You're, 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 you're mm-hmm. doing your damn thing. Second level is kind of like, uh, well, it's actually a bonus level, but you get like a, a pogo stick. And then the third level is very explorative, you know, considering it's a two dimensional side score. <clears throat> so, th- you know, there's definitely that. And there are some unique breaks in between where you get to do, you know, um, not puzzle rooms, but like special extras rooms, you know, kind of like Mario did and Sonic. Yeah. So this was definitely mm-hmm. supposed to be like, you know, one of, the, one of them kind of games. Definitely. Um, so I'll, I'll actually give gameplay, I think it's dynamic enough to get a four. I really do. I, I honestly... It really is, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I think what I appreciate, especially in games like this, like I I love platformers as much as the next guy, but a lot of them tend to be tend to be mundane experiences that only drive you towards a certain goal in one direction. Whereas this one says, "Yeah, you can go there, but why not explore a little bit and feel the level out and see where it takes you and see what you can find in the stage." And I tend to like platformers that do that more because then you get to see more of the ideas of what these guys had to flesh out with the game you know a lot more of the potential i think especially with something like this and no go on no no sorry no 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 no. No, you're good go on no uh no no, no, the only thing was i was gonna say was i was impressed that the action was able to keep up with the idea of this whole like sonic momentum based gameplay with like the skateboarding and stuff i'm glad that they were able to keep it up and the frame rate wasn't like going to slow down to a crawl when you're doing it. Like everything is in the pocket. You can at least tell what's happening. So that was good. So what were you going to say? Uh, I was saying that um, this is one of those games that isn't afraid to change up mechanics in between levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that I noticed, because um, this is the last level I played was the intestine level. Uh, you know, they, mm-hmm. they, Change the completely uh, uh, the entire formula. You're bouncing around. <clears throat> You're not as stable as at the last two levels. Um, there, there's lifting platforms. It does take a, a drastically different approach to design. And right. uh, you know, while it may have been kind of relevant to do that at the time period i don't remember a lot of games doing it well like even like mario super mario world or you know other i you know other i'm trying to think of other good platformers from the nes days Uh, i can't think of many and i can't think Mm -hmm. of ones that were dramatically impressive to the point where you're like oh this is revolutionary this one does a pretty good job uh you know so that's why i think a a four is, is definitely right there um what are you giving it? I think I'm going to give it a four, too. There was another gameplay thing I noticed, too, when we are talking about variety. I don't know if you noticed it, too. Um, it has the whole air, like, when you're going underwater, there's that whole breathing mechanic, like, from the Sonic games in there, but it's linked to a meter. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the clever thing, I don't know if you ever tried it or noticed it, but you can actually go to the fish and take the air from them and keep yourself alive. I don't know if you ever noticed that mechanic. Uh, no, I can't say I have. 
no, like that, and I, I just felt like that was another thing that adds to like that dynamic, like you're saying, like of changing things up in gameplay. It's keeping things, you know, on a certain different level, and I, I appreciate that. So you said four, you said four, right? Mm-hmm. I think, I think I'm uh, honestly, yeah, I, I think it's dynamic enough to where it earn it earns that rating. This is fairly a solid game so far, so four. So you're giving it a four, you said. Yeah, four. Okay. Um, now we move on to fun factor. He's a dinosaur who skateboards. Five. How do you have fun with this mechanic, man? <laughs> Come on. It's not even a mechanic. He's the goddamn first ever Tony Hawk. Because Tony Hawk, you know, was born in like 1960-something. Radical Rex was born at, you mm-hmm. know, 1 trillion B.C. Originator. Oh, man. If you can have fun with this, something's seriously wrong with you. Like, it's, come it's, on. It, it's, it's what we call a, uh, a high concept. And uh, this is the kind of shit that needs to be a movie. Oh man, I, I I could just picture it being like if this movie if this actually got made into a movie in the '90s, it would be like the Jim Henson company would be making the live like costumes for it and stuff like that. Oh god, like that would be Whoopi Goldberg cool. dinosaur movie. No, please don't make that movie. No, it got to be better than that. Oh. Uh, Theodore Rex, I want to say it was oh, called. God. Oh, how do you remember that? Yeah, that movie was terrible. Because it played, um, I had a VHS tape of, I had all the Turtles movies on VHS, and I believe the second movie has a trailer for it, if I remember right. Dude, Superman was in this movie. (sighs) What? Oh, God, he played Theodore Rex. So, you know how, like, when everyone talks about Batman, everyone's like, George Clooney's the best. No one says that. Uh, Val Kilmer's the best. Michael Keaton, Christian Bale. You, you, you know how... You know, and then everyone just goes, oh, yeah, you, you guys are arguing, but none of you have said the real one. Kevin Conroy. And then everyone goes, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, Kevin Conroy. Definitely Kevin Conroy. You know, you know how that argument goes? Mm, yeah, I usually know. Well, when it comes to Superman, there's been, you know, arguably, I would say four. You know, five, technically. Uh, Superman has been played by a lot more well-versified actors. And even, even Henry Cavill. Cavill, Caviezel, uh, even Henry Cavill has his his supporters, but but it boils down to obviously Christopher Reeve. Uh, mm. Then you have Tom Welling from Smallville. Brandon Ralph okay. has gotten a lot of love for his portrayal of Superman, especially with the 2019 crossover on the CW, where he returned to the role of Superman. Uh, then you have uh, George Newbern, mm. and then you have. Um, uh, wait, I had to wait. Hang on, almost there. Um, uh, God damn it, I lost it. Uh, the guy George Newburn replaced essentially. <clears throat> um, so I, you know, he he played Superman on the, on the Justice League cartoon in the early two thousands, which was hmm. like a, a a big to do because everyone's like, mm, "Where's the guy from Superman the Animated Series?" Because that's you know the. The, the Justice League cartoon was supposed to be based off of the Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series cartoons. Tim Daly, that's the other name. Tim Daly is the fifth name. Um, but they decided to go with uh, George Newborn probably for cost reasons. Uh, but Tim Daly has since okay. returned to the role uh, eventually. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So he did the voice of this guy in this movie? The, the, the yeah, T-Rex yeah, thing? George... Uh, uh, not George. Uh, yeah, George Newborn. Uh, the... Second voice of Superman did the voice of Theodore Rex. Fucking Christ! Oh man, not a good career move, my friend. Not a good career move, my friend. No. Yeah, definitely gonna remember that one in the morning. Oh man, that one got that's what's got to fucking hurt, man. No, it does. It's like finding out that like Kevin Conroy played Donald Trump. You're like, no, why Batman? Why? So, uh, what's your score for the fun factor? Um, it, it, it's easy. It's it's easy on here. It's five. This game's a blast. I mean, there's no way around it. 
And moving on to the challenge. So you're giving a five. I was only partly paying attention. Challenge. Mm. Mm, I would say this game has... I'd say it's moderate. Yeah. Yeah, I think moderate's fair. Um, it's definitely beatable, but it does present a challenge. Um, it's one of those games where patience pays off and kind mm. of figuring out what you can do with, because you know, different levels, you know, allow you to do different things. Um, I, I would definitely say that, you know, the payoff is there mostly because you're a fucking dinosaur who skateboards. <laughs> just, let's just keep hammering that point because it's the only one you need to know. No, exactly. Now, the only hang up is, you know, through the levels I played, I think I got three or four in. Um, I only skateboarded once. So, like, the fuck? I did it like three or four times, actually. Like, I found a skateboard in most of the stages. Oh, did you? I did. Yeah. I didn't. So, I guess I'm just terrible at this game. Uh, as far as challenge goes, I think it's nearly perfect. But I do think that um, some of the levels, you know, maybe I should have played longer. But I think some of the levels would have benefited for more, um, more, um, skateboard kind of setup for their um, level design. Like, go a little bit more on like the... faster uh, pace sequences? Yeah, or yeah. That's like a good maybe way that? It. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So I'll give it a four. Really enjoyable. Worth trying to beat. It... Yeah, I think, I think what helps this, too, is, like, um, what adds the slight bit of challenge in it to make it unique is that it's not just um, straight platforming, finish the stage. They actually want you to explore and, like, manage things, like manage how much power you have or how fast you go or you need to collect certain items to finish the stage. There are other things you can do in order to um, help yourself progress further. You know, everything is le leading to something. But the challenge, they still say, is moderate, but it's good. Uh, I would have to go with a four. Yeah, solid. Well, unfortunately, strong scores across the board, but you fall just short. You oh, get, just short? Oh, man. You get a 21 out of 25 for an 84%, so that's damned respectable. Damned respectable. <clears throat> but in order to make the Game Core Hall of Fame, you got to get a 90. And I think, to be fair, this game does fall just short. Doesn't have that great theme song. Mm. I, I think the uh, um, the level designs would have benefited a little bit more from having a skateboard. And I mean, like, the layout, not so much the, the graphical design of, of the levels. I think the levels themselves are stunning. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot to love here. But it does fall just short of, of being in our Hall of Fame. It's in our Hall of Very Good. Anything above a 70 is worth playing in. in or well, actually, anything above the 60 is worth playing. So if you get into into the 80s, like you're doing, you're doing pretty good. So this is a 21 out of 25, Matthew, for an 84. percent Well, it, so well so far in terms of what we've actually reviewed this year, this is in this is easily in the top five of everything we've done in the past six months so far. Yeah, that's so. not that's not a strong statement. Like that 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 doesn't sound as good as you think it does. <laughs> I'm not saying it does. What I'm saying is, is that it makes the decisions that I made look even worse. <laughs> yeah, you suck. <laughs> what terrible no, monstrosity yes. do you have for us next week? I honestly don't know. I am getting that Evercade thing we're talk we talked about last week, and I'm gonna see maybe if we can get some, maybe find something off of there I can review, so I can try out the system and review the game too. All righty. So, <clears throat> with that said, let's get to our useless news. With your host, Matthew Hedrick. And on Skateboard Tyrannosaurus Rex News, Radical Rob, a.k.a. The Cleesmeister, a.k.a. Chad Porto. And now to the front desk with your useless news and your host, Matthew Hedrick. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Thank you for the introduction, Chad. My name is Matthew Hedrick. It's Senor Cleavemeister. Useless news. You said you went by a bunch of different. God damn it! You went by a bunch of different aliases. I called you by the last one. It still counts. Senor Cleavemeister. It, it, I'm, I'm a descendant of Cleavesby. All right, Senor. Let's get into it. <laughs> senor. So anyway. Oh, Jesus. The KKK is no more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, like, oh, God. Like, <sighs> there's two. Where like, do you even start? <laughs> I don't even know. Like, there's, there's always been, like, the running joke. Like, everything's always going to be, like, rated M. Uh, in, unless you unless you get to kill Nazis or zombies, right? Right. I feel like the clan fit right into that. Mm. If, you, if you if you have to kill clan members, I don't think the ESRB is going to be like, I excuse me, this game have bountiful m amounts of blood. Yes. Do you decapitate uh, people uh, at regularly? Indefinitely. Yeah. Is this game hyperactive in the gore and violence? It's literally in the game. It's in the name. It's hyper gore graphic violence. Do you have to kill any clans member? Oh, yeah. So we're going to go with an E for everyone. Everyone all right with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a little, I'm a little get the concerned. Game, get the game now, kids. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about the outright violence and director towards a, a specific group of people. All right, Karen, PG, like, what, what the fuck do you want from us? Like, we're, we're, we're endorsing killing clan people. Like, we endorse killing zombies. We endorse killing fucking Nazis. But, but oh, Karen over here, got to throw an M on Castlevania because werewolf are people, too. All wolves matter. Okay, Karen. That should be the next Wolfenstein game. Instead of killing Nazis, you just go around shooting clan members. <laughs> I mean, I still that subscribe to the awesome. theory that you can bring someone back from the hate. But we're talking video games. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in video games, you know, faceless masses are faceless masses. Child predators, slave traders, clansmen, soccer fans. Like, these are things that, you know, you, 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 you're... you're <laughs> <trying to share. laughs> nice touch. Right. So apparently what was happening was uh, hackers were spawning um, NPC clans members into games that had... Um, black uh, uh, players, or at least black avatars, because I don't know how they would know they were players. Um, now, obviously, that's that's fucked up, all right, because that's targeted harassment. Oh yeah. Uh, so th so Rockstar cracked down. I'm not going to go into the technical logistics of it because, like, to me, that's like trying to explain Latin to you. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know Latin. Yeah, it's like me trying idea. to. It's like me trying to s explain Sanskrit to you. I don't know Sanskrit. <laughs> they did a thing that made the other thing not possible. What more do you need to know on that front? I've never played Red Dead Online. So I don't know if it's any good. Mm -hmm. I know they're hoping that it turns into the next GTA 5, which, I mean, fair. I don't have a problem with this. Because um, you, can, you can kill clan, clansmen in the game. Um, I've mm -hmm. actually done it once. I found them. And actually, technically, I didn't kill him because I read a hmm. spoiler. So it doesn't matter if you attack them, kill them, what have you. If you just watch, they'll eventually kill themselves. Hmm. The one I saw was they were doing a meeting, and they were trying to write, uh, light the cross. And they dropped, like, the oil that they were trying to use to... to you know, get it soaked and then it accidentally lit and then like three of them caught on fire and they started running around like a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Yakety Sax, I think, was playing in the background or at the very least inside my head. <laughs> Let's see what's on your robe, guys. <laughs> I mean, basically, I think that was a line of dialogue. And apparently, like, there's like four or five encounters and they all go very similarly. I will say I did put some of them down when they were on fire because, you know, even clansmen deserve to die a quick death. 
One of them got away. And I went looking for him. Like, I spent 10 minutes hunting his ass down. I couldn't find him. Oh, man. So, so yup. This is, this is fucking, this is fucking insane. I, I could, I mean, it doesn't totally surprise me that they were, like, hackers were putting them into the, in, into the game. I mean, because people will do anything just to try to see if they can get it to work in the game. So it's not really all that surprising, but the fact of what you said with the whole targeted harassment thing, that's just disturbing. Yeah. And the fact that it still happens, it's just, it's wrong. Why why do it? If you're going to do it for one reason, fine. If you're going to do it for another, no, no. No, take it out then, if that's what you're going to use it for. Right, and I think what you meant is if you're going to do it to see if you can do it just because it's in the game and, and that's what, you know, that's what modders do, that's right. fine. But if you're doing it because you're trying to be a dick bag, yeah, it's not cool. Yeah, that's, it doesn't fly. That's not cool, Charlie. That ain't cool. All right, so an indie developer has apologized for the level devil inside because apparently there's a racial stereotype for black people. It has to do with the, the I think it's the masks that they're, the characters are wearing in the game or something like that. It's supposed to represent certain tribes that have to do with um, people of African descent. That's what kind of like pissed them off about it, I guess. Maybe it was too too racially charged for them when they were literally just saying they were wanted to make characters that just they were trying to figure out a creative way to make the masks and make the designs pop off the screen. They weren't really thinking of anything racially charged here. People were just kind of overreacting to something they didn't really know much about, you know? Well, usually you know me. I like tearing down overreactive babies. But if what I'm mm. seeing right here in the front is, is Cause I thought so. So here's the thing: <laughs> forty-two fucking trains of thoughts. So I thought you. <laughs> okay. So so, this is the uh, you, you're you're watching. Yes, you're watching the stream. Yes, yeah, Sam. Okay. So when I saw this person right here on the screen, um, I thought these were the eyes. Uh, this was the mouth, right? So I was like, all right, what's the big fucking deal? Then I realized. These are the eyes. This is the mouth. And this is all just like hair and shit. Mm -hmm. Mouths with black backgrounds and big old chunky red lips is a huge racial stereotype from the early days of like comic books. Um, the mm -hmm. one that I know right off the bat that, that used this was, um, what was it, The Shadow? He had like a... a a comic made in like 2009 that had Scarlett Johansson in it. He had a sidekick that was a racial caricature. Big lips, hmm. black character. So there is some there is some point of reference here. But I thought it was a different mask, but I, I was incorrect. Now, I don't think they all need to be re remade because if you look at this jaunty fellow in the back, Oh, wait, nope. Again, I thought that was the mouth. There it is. Yeah, they need to change the mouth. So you do think there's justification to the claims people are making on this, then? Yeah, and you got to understand who, uh, who, who did the thing. Um, who's the creator? Uh, John Chow, I think his name is. Because it's a South Korean developer. Yep. I saw his name. What the fuck I did. is it? Choi. Oh. John Choi. Okay. Uh, there's a, a... How do I say this delicately? The Asians don't give a fuck about your racial sensitivity. Yeah, I said it. So... Uh, yeah, that wasn't really a sensitive way to put it, but okay. <laughs> well, I don't give a fuck about their racial insensitivity, so here we are. Um, yep. They don't do it maliciously. I, I, it, to them, it, it, you have to understand, th this racial context is a very North American thing. There are slurs that Koreans use against Chinese that I'm sure neither one of us would have a fucking clue about. Mm -hmm. A lot of slurs, a lot of racial context is very regionalized. So I don't, I, I don't sit here and go, you racist. 
but I also kind of do because y- y'all, well, technically Japanese, not Korean, but y'all made fucking Mario, and he's a goddamn four foot two plumber who can only do masonry and plumbing because that's what Italians were allowed to do in the 1930s and 40s and 50s and 60s. So, so is it just a, is just to clarify that you're saying that this is something that in their culture they're not necessarily aware of or acknowledge? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Here's the here's the problem when people get offended. Everyone looks at the mm. world through a Western lens. Mm-hmm. That's inauthentic. I don't know if John Choi has been in America. I don't know if he's from America. I don't know anything about the man. But I know mm. this is a Korean developer with Korean designers. So I have to imagine that most of these guys don't think about that in a specific sense. That doesn't make it right, and I'm glad that they're changing it, but I don't think it was malicious in nature. Um I think they're. No. I think looking at the designs of the masks, it, it definitely does look like they're trying to spoof the uh, Uka Uka masks from Crash Bandicoot. You know, there, a little it, bit, yeah. There, it, there, there like is that, yeah. there is some kind of of that design there, and, and and by no means am I saying they're stealing it, but like they're, it looked like they're trying to create masks that were the antithesis of that. Lighter wood, less cheer, less colorful. So like this seems to be the idea. And it just didn't land. But I'm glad they're changing it. And, you know, it's no reason, no reason uh, to, get, to get crazy. Well, yeah, but just because you're not even... It, it, there, the truth is, too, like what we were saying before, is just because you're not aware of it, because it's not a part of your culture, doesn't mean that when you're making a game, you can't try to make it appeal to the wider audience because you're supposed to be selling this thing. If you limit the audience, you limit what you can make off of it. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where when you don't understand the region you're marketing to or or going in and designing off of, mishaps can happen. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, making a racial stereotype plumber and turning him into a trillion-dollar icon, you fucking racist bastards. (laughs) But I love Japan. I do. They're a wacky little group of people. Like Canada, only they don't annoy me with their... Canada's the vegans of of the world. Like, can we all agree on that? <laughs> the vegans of the world. Vegans annoy you that much? Well, no. Matt, how, ma, ma, how do you know when a person's a vegan? When they tell you that they are? Well, y- y- kind of, yeah. The joke goes, how do you know when a person's a vegan? Wait five minutes. They'll tell you. <laughs> how do you know someone's a Canadian? Wait five minutes. They'll tell you, and then they'll apologize. But then they'll, they'll do it with an air of, of, of arrogance and cynicism. Oh, sorry about that. I'm Canadian, eh? You fucking Americans. And you're like, oh, what would you say to me, you fucking ham eater? You moose fucker? <laughs> Why don't you get on your fucking Zambonis and drive off to the great white north, you fucking cunt? Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's hockey, right? Hockey. Hockey? Hockey? Okay, how about I take a fucking hockey stick across your goddamn jugular, you fucking maple leaf licking motherfucker? Sorry. <laughs> I actually have no idea. We were watching hockey. 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 <laughs> hockey. <laughs> I'm not your buddy, guy. I'm not your guy, friend. I'm not your friend, buddy. I'm not your buddy, guy. Oh, God. South Park's re- recreation of that always, gives, always kicks me. It's so good. Wait, recreation? Like recreation of Canadian culture. Oh, okay. Like they're, they're, I, I thought that was making... a, I thought that was a movie scene that they spoofed. I was like, what? No, no, no. Just recreation of their culture. Just that, like, I'm not your buddy guy. I'm not your guy, friend. My favorite. My favorite. There's there there's there's three great ones. Four counting that. But that one's technically part of one. Uh-huh. The strike, which led into that, where they got like <laughs> you know twenty five dollars from Bennigan's or something like that. <laughs> then there was the uh, the, the Canadian devil. Uh, yeah, where he pooped all the time. And then the best one was, um, there's only one road in Canada. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I have no ill will towards the Canadians. That's why it's funny to go off on them, because it makes no fucking sense. If you ever play, if you ever get a chance to play the South Park games, when you go to Canada both times in both games, it's hilarious. Like, the recent games. Mm-hmm. Like, one one goes to, like, straight 8-bit. And the other one just puts a big wall up in front of you and goes, hey, guys, sorry, we didn't have enough time to create something to give a shit about this game, so you can't come into Canada. So 
EA did a press conference. Why, why am I in this part. one? Star Wars Squadrons Skate. All right, then we're moving on. Skate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Skate basic. Skate basically got willed into existence. There was a lot of. I think it was when the Tony Hawk thing got announced. Um, the re the remaster got announced that. Skate Four was trending on Twitter for for that reason. People are wanting to bring that back. That, that's like that's like saying I have I have, um, clear Coke, and now Pepsi Crystal. Cl- that's what it's called, Crystal Coke, and, and now I'm going to do Crystal Pepsi or or vice versa. And you're like, why? Why why are you? Ugh. No no one cares about skate. We're yeah. here. Can for we just the have tone. Tony Hawk and skate? Leave them alone. We're here for the tone. <laughs> So PS5 has announced their model. Well, not announced, but but it's been uh, speculated. Speculated, but but it's now been deemed fake. The screenshot shown mm. PS5 product on Amazon featuring a price tag of four ninety nine pounds. Release date on November twentieth is fake, and it's not coming from our website. Um, the original story had. Um, PlayStation at four ninety nine pounds and the digital version at three ninety nine. I think um, uh, for dollars it was what f- was it the same for dollars? I think pound roughly tran- the pound roughly translated about five hundred and fifty five sixty somewhere in that range in American okay. dollars or U S dollars. Okay. Yeah. So five fifty for the the slot and four fifty for the digital. Um. Those are Not fake, too though. far off from what you were thinking, though, you know? Yeah, those are fake, though, so the story no longer matters. Uh, Nintendo is... Oh, you, e- sh- you sent it to me. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll never do that again. Nintendo issues cease and, desist, <laughs> cease and desist for Switch mod chip installation service. Yeah, they are, they are bunking, hankering down on people for this stuff. This is just the people who install it for you. I, I'm not sure what it... Like even does I know there was videos out there that had to do with like people putting Android onto the device because it has it runs off of the same like uh, service or something like that as Android or something. But it's it's to my, primarily protect people from running emulation. I would think I think that's one of the biggest reason why you can't, you shouldn't they don't want to do this because I know um, the Wii back in the day and it probably still does had that homebrew idea and I, I think this is just like future prevention of that alrighty moving on then free comic book day 2020 <laughs> to feature the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and a Splatoon Squid Kids comedy show apparently they're getting ready to uh, launch a, uh, a Zelda book I haven't seen a Zelda comic book since like the Nintendo Power days, honestly. Oh, so to see one just pop, to see one just pop up at random is like, I don't know. And off a of Twilight Princess of all things, when you try to like, with Breath of the Wild, hopefully the second one, at least an announcement of it being right around the corner, wouldn't you want some like prequel story to bridge the gap to your next release instead of going back to the well with something like this? The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, once upon a time, wizards tried to conquer the sacred realm of Hyrule. The spirits of light sealed the wizards' power within the shadow crystal and banished them to the Twilight Realm beyond the mirror of twilight. Now an evil menace is trying to find Mid... 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 Who the fuck named this character? Midna, the princess of the Twilight Realm. Not Zelda, apparently, because... That noise and the fragments of the shadow crystal to gain the power to rule all over both the twilight realm and the world of light. Plus, Splatoon Cat's comedy show, a new series based on the world of Splatoon, the <laughs> video game series from Nintendo. Whoa, it's like Nintendo Power is back. Is it? Is it 1991? Is AIDS still a problem? <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> Oh, look! Bush! (laughs) (laughs) And not just the kind I smoke, bro. (laughs) Who was the president in 91? Was it Bush? No. Yes. No, I think it it was. I think it it was. was Yeah, Yeah, it was Bush. (laughs) It's George Bush. He's the president. He's also the president in 2000. What? 
I've been smoking too much of this heroin. <laughs> how, lo how long have I been high for? <laughs> yeah, he's present for eight years. Whoa, that doesn't make sense. That would mean he served 12 terms. Almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think we're going to take this away from you for a while. <laughs> hey, uh, did Pogs become big? For like 30 months. Aww. <laughs> I'll go. I'll, can, can I still get some Dunkaroos? <laughs> Dude, now you just offended me. <laughs> hey, uh, they're, they're actually back too, which is all, which is weird. Hey, uh, can I get some of those shark bites? Oh shit, dude! Hey, Hulk Hogan's <laughs> still definitely not a racist, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, some squeeze it while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. Squeeze it. Yeah, you don't remember the squeeze it the juice drinks? Ah, uh, uh, like yeah, I like those. Those probably gave me diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever get diabetes, I know where I got it from. Um, I'm squeezing a face of juice. <laughs> yes. So. Um, Wait, now, I, it says here the release is like September 9th or something. Yeah, free comic book day happens in May. But they moved it back. Okay. Now, I can't see anything about this being an actual series. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Just more like a one-off? It's very possible, because they said that the Splatoon stuff was, in fact, a jumping-off point for a new series. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll see. We got some new... The Splatoon thing is just weird to patch together. That's just weird to me. Well, they're Nintendo, so not really. Uh, the World Video Game mm. Hall of Fame inducted Bejeweled. Okay. I guess the bar is pretty low these days. I guess so. <laughs> was, was Metal Gear Solid already in? Centipede, King's Quest, and Minecraft into the virtual ceremony. The Hall of Fame class of 2020 featured a field of 12 finalists that also included Frogger, Feel like he uh, got robbed on that one there, Froggy. GoldenEye 007. I mean, contextually speaking. Really? Well, to be fair, if you play that game today, GoldenEye 007 is terrible. But if you're oh, basing God, it off yes. of classic merit, yeah, it deserves to be in. Guitar Hero. Ah, uh, no fads, please. No. No fads. F-A-D-S, to be clear. I don't want any fad video games in. <clears throat> NBA Jam. Fair. Nokia Snake, ah, oh, I don't know. If you put Centipede in there, maybe, may, maybe, because Nokia Snake, you know, do you ever play Nokia Snake? Do you even know what Nokia Snake is? Is it that those that game that came on, like, the, the oldest, the older cell phones? Yeah, is it's, that what this it's, is? It's just, it's just like a block that went around your screen, and you had to hit other little blocks, and then you got longer. That gets included in the Hall of Fame for what? Like, starting mobile games, I guess? Yep. Super Smash Bros. Melee, okay. Uncharted 2, and where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh my god. I did dig the cartoon of that, but I don't know about the video game as where much. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Carmen San Diego, where on earth can she be? Yeah, I remember both theme songs, motherfucker. Skills. All the skills. All right, and that takes us to Last of Us 2. Da, 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 da. Spoiler alert. The world ends now. <laughs> Although we're not far off, technically. <laughs> well, technically, they survived the world ending. Technically. Mm -hmm. and if you get a bunch of dudes with mushrooms on their head trying to eat you and you're still alive 15 years later, you're doing all right. So... Basically, despite the fact that the entire game got leaked, you know, in terms of story, uh, you, you know, Destructoid gave it an eight and a half out of ten. Game Informer, now I'm just thinking of that one song from the '90s, um, Informer. Look me boom boom down. Get the boom boom down. Yeah, there it is. That's the only part I know. <laughs> game Informer gave it a ten out of ten. Game Revolution gave it a three and a half out of five stars. That seems a little low. GameSpot gave it an eight out of ten. Games Radar Plus gave it a five out of five. IGN a ten out of ten. Push Square ten out of ten. 
Usk Gamer, U.S. Gamer, uh, gave it a four and a half out of five. Ventru Beat gave it a ninety-five out of hundred, and VG two four seven gave it a five out of five. Now, for me, getting solid scores, man. <laughs> this game is going to be heavily judged on gameplay, obviously. Mm-hmm. Gameplay, music, look, aesthetic, all that. But for the story. Maybe all the leaks were true. Maybe they weren't. I don't want to go into details. But I'm going to tell you, if, 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 if the, 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 the rumors were correct, that's going to hurt my enjoyment of this game. Oh, man. Like, yeah, I, that's why I didn't dive into any of them when I started seeing these videos pop up of, like, how dare you... Sp- this is so hard to understand. Yep, I should have listened. I didn't think they'd be true though, especially when the when the big guess who dies. I'm like, who what? See for me if that. See for me if if I if I had like even with not knowing, if I had just watched like oh it's just some random gameplay video, but they secretly just put it up as the spoilers, and I saw that I'd been like fuck. What do I? What's the point of even playing it now? I know exactly what takes place. Yeah, well, I don't know if they did. I don't know if they did that. I, all the spoilers I saw were written, so. Okay. That's just me. Uh, but <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's got the good scores, so. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not fucking surprised by the least. So. Um, Naughty let, Dog knows how to make a good game, man, for sure. I mean, you ain't wrong. So uh, let's. Uh, Let's uh let's do the uh, the the YouTube's the Ubi tubes. YouTube updates. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm being weird. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm gonna smother you. So I I didn't hear me. What's that? I said, you want to smother me with what? You never come near me. Uh, I don't know what it is. Don't you, don't you worry. I'll smother you with the Rona. You'd have to get it first. <laughs> Bitch, how do you know I don't? There, are, There is that asymptomatic aspect of it. So, yeah, you're right about that. Motherfucker, your ass kicking is not going to be asymptomatic. I can promise you that. <laughs> Well, get, get it, getting the rota has nothing to do with you beating the shit out of me. All you got to do is breathe on me and I'll die. I don't have halitosis, you asshole. So I did not finish <laughs> it's watching. It's from droplets in the air, genius. That's why I'm saying it. <sighs> I don't. <laughs> I, d- I didn't finish watching Caddy's 202 fucking bloopers. Um, not because it was bad or anything. Um, I ended up having to stop watching to finish some work. Uh, so I'm going to actually watch it later. Uh, but 58 minutes of him complaining about trying to capture all t- 2002 Platinum Relics. I know it's I know the, it's his the, the, month of, of, of Bandicoot, but... 59 minutes you, you of this think shit? This whole, you think this whole pandemic is really, really getting to him more than other YouTubers because it's just how long he's making these videos now? Well, he called himself... Uh, what was it? Um... Uh, an American mutineer or some bullshit like that to start the video. Mm. I, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. It's like, I don't know. I think maybe he's going somewhat insane. That and looking like he's 36 when he's 26 doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the time, has not been, time, has, time has not been kind to Caddy for sure. No, it has not. Let's see, what else did I watch? I don't know. Like, I know I watched some stuff this week, but I don't know if any of it was really good. I need to start writing them down, I think. Oh, wait, actually, you, no. you write them? I um I usually do that. I do that every week. I keep uh, notes and everything, so... Foaming the Squirrel, always a, a top recommendation for me. 
I'm a I'm a fan of any anthropomorphic animal that can talk shit. It it, it makes me happy. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. There's a good one. Amanda the Jedi did a video about um, Zoomers, which is Gen Z's nickname. Uh, m- okay. making fun of millennials on TikTok. And it's basically just a bunch of, like, 15-year-olds making fun of 30-year-olds who like Harry Potter still. And, like, the one that made me like, like do, like, the full nose fit was um, liking Harry Potter isn't a personality trait. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> uh, fucking true. Uh, Roddy Piper in WCW Wrestling with Regret. Uh, real, real solid video of Piper's time in WCW. It was not a... Not not a well executed run for the Piper, but it was pretty good. It, it, it wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't great. It had some moments. Um, the Punk Rock NBA did a video finally on what killed Punk. Watch it; it's a good video. But spoiler alert: um, it was being conformist, <laughs> which is the opposite of what Punk's supposed to be. Oh fuck! I think of South Park again. One of those conformists. Oh, those fucking conformists. Those. Oh. <laughs> We're, we're, we're goth. We're not emo. God. Um, am I in trouble? N- no, Jordan, you're not in trouble. Fucking conformist emo bitch. I like how their dance was just like moving side to side and putting out a cigarette. And, and listening to uh, fucking... By the way, that was basically um, the Peanuts dance. Oh shit! Yeah, it was. Oh, I forgot. The, the ringtone was "Death and Despair." Death and Despair. Well, the music they were dancing to is basically just the Cure, mm. which in itself is pretty death and despair. Love will tear us apart. So I think that's it. Um, Kind of short for you this week, huh? Uh, Scrolls and, and Robots podcast, the, the Foaming Scroll podcast that features his uh, Scroll characters, talked about the protests. Uh, yeah, like, I, I watched a, a bunch of stuff, but th- those are the four or five that I would say really stand out as, as, as church content, mint content. Um, New Japan posted a video, uh, how Okada's 2013 New Japan campaign... New Japan Cup campaign, excuse me, how, how Okada's 2013 New Japan Cup campaign changed everything. That was pretty good. If you're a fan of Japanese wrestling, that's definitely a, a video you want to be following. Uh, I think that's it for me, though. What about you? Um, okay, um, let's see. The start. Some of the highlights from my week, uh, Beat 'em Ups, he did a video on his big, honest review of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. He has kind of a rough history with this while everybody liked the series he kind of has a different take on it and i i appreciate that he's willing to take on such a beloved thing and actually be critical and a little bit hard not so much harsh but at least critical enough to get an honest viewpoint i thought that was a good video i uh, i actually did watch all of caddy's uh 202 platinum relics in crash bandicoot and (laughs) The, the the he's he's just for, he's just going insane. That's all I can basically say about that. He's just literally losing his mind at this point. Um, Slopes Game Room did a video on the complete history behind Smash TV, and uh, primarily um, was fo- focused on how the it, it's actually kind of this. It came from it started this franchise of three games that became a trilogy, kind of unofficially really it was just the, the evolution of certain things from atari to arcade and on up and like it, it was just one idea that kept getting expanded upon so i thought it was pretty cool um let's see you got some hidden gems from metal jesus rocks for the commodore 64 which i haven't touched my c64 mini since i've gotten it so let's tell you how much i cared about that one um retrosoft had update uh, updates on the creator wrestler aspect and the fact that it's not in there, I understand why. So I'm 
I'm to- I'm fine with that. Um, Scott the Waz did a look uh, on uh, gaming press conferences. It's kind of fitting to do them now, considering what we're everything's going through. And it's an enjoyable enough video, but I've liked other ones better. So it's kind of just a eh, it's good enough, but not not anything uh, noteworthy to any extent. And the last one I'll talk about is uh, she says did a video on Boundary Break for Super Mario Odyssey, and it's it's that um the one thing he exploits in a lot of his games is this T pose idea of like the animation that takes place before something, mm-hmm. and he found us he found a scene in the game where the it's been in advertisements too where pauline the character from donkey kong she's singing on stage in one of the stages and she has this whole crowd in front of her he found a way to stop the animation to where they all have their arms in the pose <laughs> so he just he looks like he just looks at it and goes oh man i, I think a cult's gonna come after me <laughs> they just look so freaky so it's a good video and i always enjoy his content and i can't wait i can't wait to see what other uh, secrets he's gonna find but yeah other than that not much else to really highlight. I'd say that covers about all of it. I need a boundary break from you. Well, technically, a boundary break is you go beyond things to figure out more about a person. Do you really want to do that? Doesn't mean I get to stay away from you longer? No, because what he does with this is he explores things more, so that means you actually are going to put more investment into me. I don't think you want that. Listen, asshat. <laughs> hey, you're saying it. I'm just telling you what it means. Okay? I'm trying to tell you that you need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, fuck. So what are we doing for next week? It's not my, it's not my, it's not my fault I take things literal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Drax. <laughs> you're, you're fucking Doc Brown oh, from 1950. Man. Uh, you keep saying heavy. What? Is is the gravitational pull of the Earth off in the future? What? What? No, no, Doc. It's uh, it, it's it's it, it means it's intense. <laughs> Doc, bitch is cheating. If you've never seen the uh, the the Back to the Future uh, uh, deleted scene, Marty McFly dresses up like a uh, like a stereotypical cholo from back in the day, and he comes walking into the school and he sees his mom cheating and he's like, "Da bitch is cheating." Super fucking racially insensitive, but funny. <laughs> I am, um, I am actually getting a game sent to me for the Dreamcast this uh, week. There was a game I told you about, uh, Xeno Crisis. How that was like a big indie game that got released to multiple platforms. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting that this week. If you want to possibly cover that one, maybe. I don't know. It's pretty. It's like only like I think it's like twenty bucks in the PlayStation Store, and <sighs> I. Th- I think you can get a ROM for it too. So, if you want to, we can cover that one. Maybe it's a simple enough game, but it's enjoyable. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Uh, I, I don't feel the need to. Uh, I don't feel the need to validate myself to you, asshole. You are not my mother. No, we're good. <laughs> uh, if I, I don't have any extra cash on me at the moment, so if I can find it, uh, emulate it, I'll, I'll, we can do it. Otherwise, send me some suggestions midweek, and, and we'll pick something else. All right. Sound good? Yep, fair enough. All righty. You can find us on the website, realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P dot com. You can also find us on the Podbean at realnerdcorp.podbean.com, or by downloading the Podbean app to your mobile device and searching for the podcasts at Real Nerd Corp on the, on the Podbean app. We're also on Spotify and iTunes by searching for NerdCorp, N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We are on twitch.tv backslash comic and game core every Saturday night around 11.30-ish, Sunday morning, midnight-ish, 12 a.m.-ish. If you're up on the West Coast, it's 9 p.m. Saturday nights, usually, sometimes, possibly. You can find Matt on his personals at... MNerdCorp on Twitch, same handle on Twitter. You can find mine at Chad Nerdcorp on Twitter. I'm the Shakespearean monkey. Two banana or not two banana? That is the question. My tail is the east, and that weird dude flicking me off is the west. 
I'm a Shakespearean actor, by the way. I didn't know if you knew that. And you can also find me on my Instagram at Chad's Photo at C-H-A-D-S-P-H-O-T-O-H-U-T. That's C-H-A-D-S-P-H-O-T-O-H-U-T. Uh, is that everything? Did I forget anything? I don't know. I usually go through your whole spiel. I tend to I tend to zone out during it. <laughs> I tend to zone out whenever you speak, so I mean, like, fair. <laughs> fair. Uh, so, yeah, uh, just go to the website if you, if you missed anything, realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com, or the Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. Until next week, we're done. We'll see what happens. It'll be a show. With all that being said, we're done. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. I, I'm just so done. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. Matt, take us home, you conniving conundrum of an outro. Whatever, man. You just cut it there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>